Good morning Aries. Uh, so I don't know what we're going to have for you today. I've not got any plans. We're just going to pull some cards. Um, I've got a few cards out already as I'm trying to tune into your energy um, and this card which <laughs> I kind of like did a little mini reading to kind of get my head around what I was going to do uh, I decided to just kind of wing it but um, I went to put this deck away um, back into the box and then I looked and I'd still left that card out so I don't know if the Wheel of Fortune is applicable to you in any, any kind of way I've also got this Aries card out um, from my gods and goddesses deck because it is uh, the the god that's associated with your sign, obviously Aries, Aries. Uh, the only difference is an eye. <laughs> uh, so um, you put the eye in Aries, Aries. <laughs> um, there's something going on here with these cards that I kind of associate with your sign, where it's like, can you see, like the fool, the knight of wands, the ace of wands, this all sort of talks about um, feeling really excited about something, wanting to go out, like kind of sow your wild oats, or, um, you know, not necessarily that, you know, it depends, but like, you know, this need for their excitement, this need for something new, this need, like this inability of Aries to be able to kind of sit still for too long, because you kind of want the excitement. Um, it's funny, one of your songs as well that came through, um, kind of is... is clarifying this I wonder if you've picked on, up on what it could be already uh by some of the things I'm saying so it's almost like it's almost like there's this cycle of like younger Aries energy that kind of goes out and explores and has fun and kind of gets themselves into scrapes and then uh kind of you know return so there's this kind of returning energy for me today returning to the emperor so some of you could be returning to um a, a parental figure, um, some kind of workplace, um, some kind of authority in your life. Um, I'm seeing it kind of like a father or grandfather even possibly as well. Like it's almost like returning home. I keep getting this energy. Um, maybe like returning to the place you were born, possibly something like this. Um, but it's also coming to me through to me today as like um, kind of like this Aries energy of somebody who's kind of fought a lot of battles, they've, they've, um, you know, they've learned a lot of lessons in life, they've gone and got themselves into sticky situations and got themselves back out again. So with all this kind of um, spontaneous energy of Aries, I feel like, um, you know, over time, people start to learn lessons, they start to mature. Yes, they still have that fire within them, uh, that need for excitement. But there's also this sense of like trying to settle down coming through with this Emperor card here. So what I'm kind of getting is like, it really is like warrior king and energy. Like, you know, if you're she, he, they, it doesn't matter. Um, it's it's the energy that I'm reading for today. So again, you don't even have to be Aries sun sign. It could just be that Aries is affecting your chart right now. I should say actually that um, uh, the planet Mars, which is associated again with Aries, Mars is the Roman equivalent of Aries, uh, it's actually in Taurus right now. So this is your ruling planet and it's in a very, very grounded sign. The Emperor represents both Aries and Taurus in the tarot. So um, Taurus energy is very, very stable, very grounded, very practical, very traditional, uh, kind of puts in the work over time and wants a return for their investment. So maybe there's something about returning to an investment here for you. Um, you know, maybe you put money away and you kind of like going, checking in on it, something like that could be that. Returning to an old job, uh, you know, going out, having fun, but then returning to some kind of like leadership position. You know, maybe it's like um, a dad who's been in lockdown and he's like, do you know what? I just need to go out with the boys and kind of have some fun and then come back. So um, it's coming through as masculine energy, but it doesn't have to be. So if you're a female, it's like, you know, you're a mum, you've been in lockdown, um, you kind of like, I just want to go have a night out with the girls and let off steam and then like come back and, and kind of settle back down again. So it's something like this going on for me today is what I'm picking up on. But I have to say though, this emperor, I'm really getting that sense. You see, he's got like armor on. He's kind of like got the kind of the robes on of the king, but it's like, he's never really going to settle down. Uh, he's got the, these, his armor on underneath. He's like, it's almost like sat there trying to be very grounded, trying to be dependable, trying to be like the wise counsel in the situation. But there's this like need inside for like this excitement and like going out and like, I just want to have some fun. It's like, yeah, it's it's like maybe Aries, maybe you're in some kind of leadership position where it's like, um, you know, you, you, 
got a job where you're kind of responsible for your team um you know you've got to be quite mature you've got to be quite sensible in the situation but it's like it's almost like coming it's like building up inside you it's like I can't, I can't stand it any longer I just have to go I just have to do something new it, it, or it, or you've done this and like you're returning to it or this is like a, a cycle for you where you know you can only be grounded and sensible for so long before you have to kind of let that child out to come and play again you know you are the child of the zodiac there with the full card so um yeah I don't I'm not sure um let's see i feel like you're trying to be good it's like you're trying to be the family person you know you're trying to like be the good boss but it's just like you can't help it sometimes it's like that aries come energy comes out to play and you just you just want to have some fun um now they're giving me girls just want to have fun so that could be relevant for you i'll write it down it's cindy Lauper. girls wanna fun send right so the songs that came through for you, the second song that came through for you actually was Teenage Kicks by The Undertones. So <laughs> such an appropriate song for the energy that I was picking up on. I need excitement and I need it bad. Uh, so I don't know if it could be you or this could be someone you're connecting with. So take it as it resonates. But um, she looks so good as she walks down the street. I want to hold her, want to hold her tight. Uh, so somebody's definitely got their eye on somebody here. I mean, it was Valentine's Day yesterday. So, you know, these things are going to happen. The other song that came through for you on Spotify as I was setting up the reading was um oh hello burbs um that the reminding me so I'll tell I'll tell you now I'm sorry to interrupt myself but um as I got up to make myself my coffee this morning um I saw kind of like you know when you kind of sense a shadow behind you or like something passes in front of the light so I turned around to the window that was behind me and there was two magpies right outside my window on my fence now I don't normally see magpies in the area I don't normally see magpies um, in my garden um, I mean I do see them from time to time but not usually um, it's normally small birds in my garden and a lot of crows around the rooftops uh, the, and seagulls as well and the kind of the crows and the seagulls kind of have their own spaces so the magpies don't really come into the area unless they're stealing eggs right um, but yeah these two magpies so of course the thing goes one for sorrow two for joy so looks like there's going to be a bit of a twist of fate here or you're taking the wheel something like this um but also magpies to me are birds about balance the black and white like the yin yang symbol so to me personally it's like um two people who have come into balance uh two energies that are balanced like it's like maybe like two people in a relationship and they're both they've both gone off and done the work and they're both coming into some sort of balance um so something there for somebody um i don't know if it's part of your reading or if it's a sign for me i've not figured out quite what that is yet but the crow made me think of it so um yeah the other song for you was riptide by vance vance joy i don't know maybe someone looks like michelle pfeiffer <laughs> he says someone looks as close to michelle pfeiffer as he's ever seen or something in that song but he says i want to be your left hand man i love you when you're singing that song i got a lump in my throat because you sang the words wrong so it's almost like a slip up like somebody's let something slip because they sang the words wrong perhaps um and what else does he say a man who just oh he's like he's saying something about a man who uh, quits his job and moves to new york city um and i've been picking up on this actually somebody this thing about somebody returning home and also this thing about somebody, I mean, he's he's kind of got like a globe in his hands. It's almost like a golden apple. It's funny, Pisces had a golden apple uh, business in their reading. So if you're on the cusp of Pisces Aries, go in, and you, you are in kind of like a lovey-dovey situation, go and check out my Valentine's Day reading from yesterday for Pisces because I was talking about the golden apple. So um, I keep getting apple business. I keep seeing apples. So yeah, New York, the big apple. The golden apple golden opportunity in new york maybe somebody's taking a job in new york maybe it's some kind of leadership position um but yeah there's kind of like a man who just quits his job and moves to new york city like it's like unexpected right it's like everybody's like oh aries just aries just quit the job and moved to new york city what aries we weren't expecting that what did you do but i feel like it could be something you've been planning for a while actually now there's something you've been planning for a while um, but you've just not told anyone or it's I've got the beep beep truck um, or it's really spontaneous it's like this opportunity shows itself you take a leap of faith towards it you don't even think twice it's like I can't miss out on this opportunity I'm going um, I'm just going to shut the window
more confused about our date is it's the bin men, but they don't normally come today. <laughs> What's that about? Uh, it's really weird. They normally come and interrupt uh, Capricorn's readings. Oh, no, that's the other beep beep truck. Um, right, okay. What are we doing here? I've lost, I've lost my brain. Um, I, a couple of other things I've kind of got. Um, I've got this feeling of like somebody who's sown the wild oats and they've had the fun and they're maturing, they're, they're settling down. Um, you, Mars is going to square Venus on the 18th and the 19th of um, this month. So you may find that um, things get quite competitive around the 18th and 19th. Uh, there may be quite a lot of sexual tension in the air. Uh, this kind of need to kind of like um, go into battle almost. Uh, so just watch out for that. If you do feel a lot of tension, a lot of like high temper, uh, maybe try and channel it into creative projects. Wand energy is very creative energy, fire sign energy, creative energy. So yeah, do try and use it to um, pour that energy into projects that are going to help you in the future or, you know, maybe go out for a run, something to take your mind off it if you're feeling that kind of like frustrated energy um, or competitive energy. I mean, if you are going for a job and it's a golden opportunity, you know, harness that competitive energy, make the most of it on the 18th and 19th. Um, the only other things that I got when I was channeling was, uh, now again, somebody's feeling a little bit passionate here because I felt a stroke on the, um, on the, outside of my right breast <laughs> it's just like a brush like a brush stroke on the right side of my on my boob um so <laughs> that's for somebody i don't know what you've been up to aries but also um this pressure on my lips i get it from time to time it's all it's like when you kiss someone and you, your lips crush uh so it gave me lips pressed against my neck uh, which is kiss me by ed sheeran oh and the other song that i've been channeling all morning is um Irresist irresistible you are by alicia zatek is here we go again the jangle of my ankle chain is the only sound I can hear. Um, so words collide. Uh, just be careful you're not getting into an argument. Uh, so uh, maybe there's something there for somebody. I don't know. Take it if it resonates. Leave it if it doesn't. 12 minutes in. That's not bad for my introduction. <laughs> Normally I waffle for longer than that. Um, this is the song that randomised um, as I pulled up my, my light songs. It's Lola by Izzy Azalea and Alice, uh, what's that, Charter? Chatter? Um... I don't know if that has any um, meaning for you, but it's just the song that I pulled up first. So uh, take it if it resonates, leave it if it doesn't. But the song for Aries, please. The song for Aries. What is Aries going to get today for their reading, please? Give it to me. Uh, interesting. I'm going to have to do the read. I did a reading off camera and it was involving three people working together. And here you've got Timberland, Justin Timberlake and Nelly Furtado. I did a reading on the magpies, so I may put the magpie reading up after I've done this. Uh, yeah, but three people working together, three people teaming up. So that's for somebody. It doesn't have to be for you. If it's not for you, it doesn't mean the whole reading's not for you. It just means that that's a special message for someone in particular. Uh, yeah, it's like when you see us in the club, we'll be acting real nice. When you see us on the floor, you'll be watching all night. I ain't here to hurt nobody. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. So it's like uh, Timberland is like the producer and then Justin Timberlake and Nelly Furtado are like the performers. So yeah, I don't know if there's some kind of like creative project that you're going to do with some of the people. Timberland, Nelly. Sorry if you can hear my kids there in the background. Uh, yeah, but I, I, that reading, that crow reading, even though it was two crows, it was full of threes. Um, and there was like the thief card in it and stuff. So I don't know if somebody's like stolen someone's idea. I don't know. I'm not going to get too into that now because I don't want it to kind of take over your reading. But uh, it could be for somebody. So let's just pop that back in the middle there. And uh, Aries, you can go and wait up there in the top corner. And uh, yeah, let's start to pull you some cards. So what would you like to talk about today? So we're doing Aries energy, please. I'm just going to have to shift around a little bit. Just one second. Okay, so let's see what you get then. I just I had to take my top off and move a box so I was just a bit more com comfortable. I'm a bit warm now. I'll shut the window. Um, Aries energy then, please. What would you like to say for Aries today? Thank you. So we've got to the sea. Oh, okay. So somebody may have be actually traveling across water, possibly. It can be connecting with your emotions. Um, Aries energy, please. Can you get another card for Aries? What would you like to discuss today? 
What would you like to discuss today for Aries, please? They're giving me... Now, there is a message in a bottle card, but they're also giving me... Um, this card keeps coming out. Um, they're also giving me... I go to the ocean... Uh, something... I put your love in a bottle and I throw it away. And if it if it's meant to be, it'll come back to me. Something like that. What's, what is that song? Put your love in a bottle and I'll go to the beach. Something it'll come back to me. If it's you, if it's you, if it's you, then it will come back to me. Hmm. Okay. Aries, what would you like to say for Aries, please? Appreciation. So uh, here you've got comfort and hearth and appreciation. Again, it's this energy of kind of like, Oh, excuse me, so sorry, of trying to be like the emperor, being about um, house and home, wanting to kind of settle down and feel secure, wanting to be appreciated or wanting to show you appreciation for somebody else. Okay, let's read from the books then for this card and this card. So number seven to the sea. No, wrong book, trust me. So then, to the sea. I'm just going to read the oracle message. Um, being in flow, returning to source, recognising how pieces fit, fit together, a nat natural pattern of events. Again, I'm sure Pisces had a card that said flow. Um, the oracle message. Isn't it wonderful when you feel yourself in the flow of life, when events and conditions seem to engage you in a way that is fluid and effortless? This card reminds you that going with the flow is exactly what you need to do right now. Ride the wave of opportunity formed by perfect conditions. Allow trust and faith to guide you forwards as you flow like a river to the sea of life. So go with the flow. Try not to resist too much. Try not to fight things too much. Try and work with events rather than against them. Um, look for opportunities if they arise. You did have that thing about, a, you know, I was saying about maybe going for a job. Um, I feel like going for a job in New York is very specific to one specific person. But it could be like uh, just generally like um, like there's a golden opportunity coming up, like your golden apple, like don't miss out. Like if you see an opportunity, um, go with it. Um, don't overthink it. Don't kind of get yourself into a conflict over it. Uh, right. Appreciation. Choosing gratitude. This card shows a woman holding a single rose. She enjoys the scent and beauty of the single blossom. Yet around and beneath her, no, behind her are bramble bushes. She could be, when, when life gives you brambles, make blackberry pie. Um, she could be focusing on these, worried that she might get caught up in their prickly branches of difficulty. Instead, she's pausing to experience the blessing of this single flower. The sun is breaking through the clouds, shining on her choice and on the tiny buds waiting to open up. So it's like, don't... Go with the flow, trust your emotions, go for opportunities. Don't worry too much about um, kind of the prickly thorns that may be around you. Don't worry about the bad stuff. Focus on the beauty, focus on the opportunity, focus on appreciating the good things um, and trying to release any concerns about um, negativity. Obviously, take proper precautions, be safe, but um, don't worry too much. I'm also noticing that white handkerchief in her hand. It's giving me two things. It's giving me... Um, uh, birds of prey where she's she pulls the tissue out of her pocket and she waves it like a white flag and she's like parlay um so maybe somebody wants to talk to you um also though um it's giving me uh, a little bit worryingly it's kind of giving me othello um the handkerchief in othello it's um i think stolen from desdemona by iago um and given to cassius or cassius finds it and he wants to return it but um desdemona's husband sees it as um did I say the wrong name then? I may have said the wrong name. Uh, Desdemona's husband, Othello, sees uh, sees Cassius with the, the um, handkerchief um, and he thinks that they're having an affair. They're not. He's, you know, Cassius is actually really honourable. He's just trying to return the handkerchief. Uh, so could be some kind of misunderstanding there. So somebody may need to wave a white flag in a situation um, and have a bit of a chat about something. Um 
This card upright is telling you that you have much to be grateful for. And like the flowering bush behind the woman on the card, there is much, no, no jokes about bushes, okay? We don't need that look, kind of lewd here. <laughs> We're good boys and girls in, in on this channel. Um, and like the flowering bush behind the woman on the card, there is more to come that you can't yet see. Congratulate yourself for every moment you, that you choose appreciation. This decision shifts your consciousness from lack to value and it's guaranteed to bring more worth and richness of life to you so don't have a lack mentality appreciate the things that you do have uh try not to compare yourself to others with that competitiveness there especially around the 18th and 19th appreciate yeah it's like appreciate what you do have appreciate you know if you've got a roof over your head if you've got um you know the ability to keep yourself warm if you've got people who you love in your life appreciate that uh comfort yeah okay so again there may be kind of like a fear of um, taking some kind of opportunity and leaving your home life um, like with that emperor it's kind of like he had that kind of conflict with his with his home his security uh, but the need to kind of like go out and have fun so this is saying go this is saying go and have fun uh, try not to worry about things too much you know but appreciate what you do have something like that um, okay I feel like I need to see what those two were um, so this is, again, representing kind of the worry, the thoughts, the mental conflict. Uh, again, could be arguments, differences of opinion here. The Five of Swords means um, these are actually two quite difficult energies. The five, Seven of Swords is kind of the thief in the night card. Again, that thief energy, the magpie energy coming through again. It's almost like uh, somebody's either coming clean or um, somebody's... Um, perhaps been suspected of something there's been some conflict around somebody but somebody's actually saying look I'm, I'm, I'm bearing all I've got nothing to hide here uh, so again that could just be like a side message for somebody excuse me a second my son just wanted to come in and wave at me so <laughs> that happened so tell me about to the sea then tell me more about why to the sea is here <laughs> look at that it's water ten of swords yeah so there's definitely some kind of ending here something's wrapping up with that ten of swords there could have been a bit of a sense of betrayal um again that kind of thief card right it could be feeling a little bit betrayed a little bit backstabbed in a situation especially if there's like um you know it could be a work situation where there's conflicts or um, disagreements competitiveness maybe you thought you were going to get a job and somebody else kind of like got it over you something like this i feel like there's this need to kind of like to leave something behind right go to see it's almost like the six of swords card where it's like leaving the past behind and moving on to calmer waters so this card always gives me like a sense of healing it's almost like he's having a bit of a spa day i don't know if you can see that too clearly um so yeah but he's also kind of like he's just just lying back and going where life takes him he's he's allowing himself to kind of go with the flow there to be swept along so don't fight any emotions um kind of move with your emotions about a situation um but definitely there's something wrapping up and it could have been a bit of a painful ending with that ten of swords uh we'll ask about that in a minute but it's interesting that they've both got this um this water like at the halfway point almost of the card um the similarity of those two cards is really interesting uh it's kind of giving me a little bit of the ophelia as well um ophelia from hamlet and um, there's a very famous painting of her where she's kind of laid back like that with all the flowers around her. So, yeah, situation I feel like that's ended. Um, okay, so tell me more about co comfort and hearth then. Comfort and hearth. Uh, the wheel. There you go. You had the wheel at the start of the reading, if you remember. It's the card that came out and stayed out. Uh, so a twist of fate. Could be some sort of twist of fate happening here. It's for the positive. It's in the upright. So it's almost like... Um, something wrapping up but it's going to take you to a better place it's kind of like a um something that's lucky but it's kind of in disguise or like a tower moment it's it's not very nice while it happens but then afterwards you see that kind of like it clears the air or something like that so there's something happening here um with that um i'm noticing that that string of fate as well so this talks about you know this is when on the days when you kind of feel really down you feel like life's not going your way uh and like the the you know the string of fate kind of gets you up on your feet again um what am i getting here i'm getting something from it i'm just trying to i'm 
maybe you feel like, uh, yeah, maybe you've, maybe you've been clinging on to something because you can feel things shifting, you can feel things changing and you're a little bit scared of where it's going to take you. So there's this sense of trying to cling on to the familiar there with the comfort card. Um, but it's almost like things are out of your hands, like the wheels turning whether you like it or not. And it's easier for you, like the universal message here is, it's easier for you to just kind of like go with the flow. It could be a work situation, or, you know, maybe... Um, uh, a project's come to an end, a department's closing, you have to move to a different department. It's kind of like there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, there's no point fighting it. So it's going to make life easier for you if you just kind of accept the changes, accept the endings um, and move forward to the things, the new opportunities that are coming in with that, that wheel of fortune there. It is good luck. It is um, things looking up, right? Things moving in your favour. But it's going to be easier if you work with the universe if you co-create with the universe don't try and resist um you know where the universe is trying to kind of steer that boat it's like you don't have to do anything look like she's she's just in that boat it's like, like almost like she's drawing or reading it's like don't worry about it aries okay the universe is guiding you here you can see there's actually um kind of like a face over that it's like you've got some kind of guardian angel guardian spirit the universe is watching out for you um god if you believe in god um you know, whatever your belief system is, uh, there's there's an energy, a kind of universal energy steering your ship right now. So lay back, relax, allow it to happen um, and appreciate the good stuff. Focus on the good stuff. She's not focusing on worrying about where she's heading. She's reading a book. Um, it's like, oh, good. Um, now I've got the peace and quiet. Now I've got the time to kind of read this book that I've been meaning to read. It's kind of that kind of attitude. So tell me then more about appreciation. Why is appreciation here? Yeah. OK. Queen of Cups. And the fool, aha, someone wants to appreciate you, Aries, I think. Or it's telling me that the person doing the appreciation is Aries. There is a sense of being tied up to something here, though. Um, the Queen of Cups is, it could be, a, you could be dealing with a water sign. Or again, I could be talking to somebody who is very close to Pisces, like you're Aries, but you kind of, uh, in the first few days of Aries, like Aries, Pisces, Cusp. Um, but the Queen of Cups is, is, can be a water sign so uh pisces uh, scorpio cancer but it doesn't have to be uh it's in the upright so it's a positive queen of cups so this is somebody who is very nurturing very kind very patient probably i feel like somebody wants to appreciate you um it's like somebody may want to tell you um they may want to open up emotionally tell you that they value you uh they value your contribution to the to work you you know they love you they really admire you all sorts of things like this but there is this sense of being tied up so um you can actually see that on her wrist she's she's actually chained there um so it could be that somebody's chained to a previous situation i'm noticing as well you see all these kind of like swirling leaves around the color of them um and here with this kind of like this fire with the sparkles it's like i'm almost seeing this as like some kind of universal energy swirling around these two situations these two cards so it could be that if somebody is feeling quite stuck it's like maybe somebody's feeling held back they can't tell someone how they feel because they feel held back like look literally it's like these branches are on fire so it's like It's like there's a big gust of wind from the, through that chimney, right? And it's thrown sparks everywhere and it's lit this, this space on fire. So it's kind of, it's almost like, it really does feel like a funny turn of events. It's almost like, oh, this person was stuck. You know, the, you know, the vines were keeping this person in place. So one thing happened here and then it's almost like butterfly effect. Like something happened here and something happened over here. This is also 11, uh, which is, talks about two people coming together. So Hmm. Seven is like fate, destiny. One, one and five makes six. That's um, can mean like soulmate connections. It also means like um, balance. Things coming into balance. Uh, tens are about endings and new beginnings. Things wrapping up. Um, you know, zero. The fool is the first card of the tarot. It's it's throwing yourself into something new. But again, she's not exactly taking a leap of faith there. She's kind of sitting around waiting. This is always like my painting the roses red card as well. It's like um, 
it's like, well, I can't do anything right now. I'm kind of stuck in a situation for now. So I'm going to make the use of my time and do something creative. Somebody may be painting uh, or doing some kind of art project or creative. You get this a lot, Aries. There's, some, there's an Aries out there who is a painter because this is like at least the third time that I've had that in your readings now. Um, but yeah, there's something going on there with that. Maybe somebody can't open up and express themselves, so, or the waiting to, like the fool is taking a leap of faith, trusting in the universe, trusting, again, this sense of like trusting fate to take you where you need to go, uh, not resisting, but yeah, like it's, it's like while you're waiting, do some kind of creative project is how it's coming through. I've seen that as almost like, doesn't that almost look like a face there peering through the window? It's a bit creepy. Uh, okay, a lot of purple there as well, so a lot of intuition. But yeah, it's like somebody wants to tell, somebody wants to open up emotionally, but there's this sense of being held back, being restrained from taking a leap of faith. So I feel like there's like two sort of energies going on there. I don't know if it's like two different situations for you, or uh, what that could be. Um, you know, maybe it's you and your other person. Okay, so tell me about the Ten of Swords. Can you tell me what's wrapping up, please, with that Ten of Swords? Okay, so there's either some kind of, like, this could be fear. Um, it could be illusion. Um, it could be uh, secrets. It's like the moon is like things that are hidden or things that are distorted. Um but it was like, I really like this card. This is the steampunk tarot. I really like this this deck. Um, it's one of the first ones that I got. Um, but I, I, some of the interpretations are, are just really cool. I really like the kind of like the cat and the dog here sat across the water, kind of looking at the same moon. Um, so you could be separated by somebody, um, separated from somebody. Um, emotionally it could be an emotional separation or a physical separation you could be across water from somebody so this could be why we've got so much water here either representing emotions between two people possibly or um some kind of travel like you have to cross water to get to somebody uh but it's yeah yeah like they're both looking at the same moon there um there's this scorpion or lobster type thing between them as well this kind of sometimes it's like a crab sometimes it's like a lobster so sometimes it gives me like scorpio scorpio energy it kind of looks like like a scorpion sometimes it just gives me cancerian energy um, this is a pisces card so you do have the three water signs again there and there so you could be how can i how am i reading this okay different things that this could be this could be you uh, wrapping up a situation with a water sign because it's been um there's been something painful there um you know but it's, there's this tie up this like not expressing emotions wanting to take a leap of faith into something new uh, you could have strong um water placements um so you're wrapping something up what could be getting wrapped up is like um Ending a situation where there's been a lot of secrets, you've, you've, I feel like somebody's been forced to hide emotions. Um, yeah, there's a closing out of this though. I feel like whatever the situation was, there is, there is pain associated with it. Oh, uh, it could be like, um, almost like tortured thoughts I'm getting because of secrets and the unknown it's like when you don't know what's it's almost like maybe something's been going on at work and you know that something's going on you feel it intuitively but you don't nobody's telling you what's happening so it's kind of like your mind is playing tricks on you or like mentally it's kind of frustrating you that you don't have all the facts so there is this sense of like ending something and moving away that doesn't mean you have to quit your job it could like I say it could just be the the ending of this situation where you don't know what's happening somebody could be coming to you and speaking some sort of truth um but again it's this feeling of like don't worry about it too much just go with the flow because the universe is at play here uh sometimes things close out so that you can move on to a better situation and it's like you don't even you, you don't see it coming you don't have the vision yet so just allow the universe to take you um to something new um i have this quite a lot actually where i've kind of got the kind of mind that i've got gemini moon as well so i kind of i, I am quite analytical i've got a lot of sword in my uh you know air sign 
signs in my chart. So it's like, I can get a little bit stuck in my head. I can get a bit an analytical. I really like to know all the facts. I like people to be honest with me. I like to have the full information, the full details. So when I don't know something, when there's a secret, it, it kind of really gets me in my own head and it, it drives me mad. And sometimes I can kind of fear the worst. So maybe this is what you're doing with this card representing fear. It's like the not knowing makes you start to get in your own head and fear the worst in a situation. So I've, I've done this so many times and then it's like when things get revealed, it's something really, really good. <laughs> and I'm like, why, why was I worried? So um, it's like almost like... A, Perhaps in situations where, again, it could be some sort of work situation. Do you trust the people who are involved? Like, ha has the, these kind of situations happened in the past where you've not known what's going on, but it's you found out it's it's okay in the end? It's like, or have you had this situation where it's like you've not known what's going on and it's turned out badly? I feel like it's like almost like trusting the people around you in a way it could be the people want to tell you they appreciate you and the planning a surprise so don't worry too much about it um okay so comfort and hearth and the wheel uh tell me about this change of fate why is the change of fate here in relation to comfort and the hearth king of swords yeah here we go so there's something is going to probably get communicated or somebody's going to come in like um, an advisor the king of swords he can take action he's a very clear communicator he is very knowledgeable again very intellectual um it's somebody that you could go to for very good advice especially in regards to things like contracts uh, law um anything quite formal um he's um he, he's going to be able to give you really good advice there uh, or this could be you kind of planning to take action but kind of I feel like it's somebody else. I feel like it's somebody else planning on taking action, but they've not yet communicated it. You can actually see his sword is sheathed. So that means not currently taking action, not currently communicating. Um, this person has some sort of knowledge, but it's not being communicated. So that could be what's frustrating you. But I feel like, you know, the King of Swords will take action when the time is right. So something, something there with that also kind of noticing that he's got a ship again you've got a lot of boats and ships going on in your reading so far there um you know again somebody may have to cross water um and he's got this kind of like globe as well he's got a natural globe and this kind of crystal ball as well so i'm seeing again like the emperor had that that golden opportunity in his hand it's almost like that's something to do with that like maturing i'm starting to get a headache um tell me about the queen of cups why is the queen of cups feeling tied back why is the queen of cups feeling held back uh she's getting impatient temperance in reverse there's this feeling of impatience and feeling of being a little bit out of balance uh she could be queen of cups um and the temperance in reverse could be somebody with a bit of a drinking problem as well uh, it's emotions getting the better of somebody's passions or somebody's struggling to temper their emotions and passions yeah i'm feeling impatience so it could be you again it could just be some 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 watery business in your chart this is sagittarian energy by the way where it's like um wanting to communicate wanting to express some kind of emotion feeling tied back feeling out of balance because of all this waiting around wanting to take this leap of faith uh so tell me about the fool then it's like frustration tell me about the fool why is the fool here please uh, the lovers, there you go. So somebody wanting to take, yeah, it's like uh, the lovers card normally doesn't indicate um, a romantic love. Uh, it doesn't have to be, but it does tend to be. Uh, it used to be called the choice card. For me, this means uh, somebody is choosing love, choosing to open the heart, choosing to um, express their emotions in this situation. Uh, it's like maybe somebody had to choose between work or love or money or love, family or love, whatever it is. It's like they're choosing love. Uh, the, it, again, very, very beautiful card here. It, you can see that angel there bringing those two, these two people together, the holding hands. It's, uh, it's like a divinely guided choice. So again, you may have left some kind of situation. It's kind of been a bit painful. Um, fate is coming in to kind of like steer your ship for you so don't worry too much uh feeling of frustration that things aren't being communicated feeling a bit tied back you want somebody wants to communicate how they feel here they may take a leap of faith and choose love 
<laughs> watch and wait, watch and wait. <laughs> it's like, I'm <laughs> getting those penguins off Madagascar. What? Like, smile and wave, boys. But it's like, watch and wait, boys. Okay, so let's find out what else we have for you. I'm going to stop and restart. Just as I was approaching the 40 minute mark there, I didn't want it to cut out as I was talking. So can you tell me more about this this ending, this, this secrets or fear? What's going on, please, with the moon and the ten of swords? Can you tell me more about this situation that's kind of wrapping up over here? Uh, something to do with great fortune. So a financial situation. I'm not sure if it, it may have tried to come out in the reverse there. So I'm noticing the gold of the great fortune statue and the gold of the kind of lobster crab there. So again, there could be something associated with either a Scorpio or a Cancer and money. Um, again, that thief energy. So there could be some sort of conflict over money. It's something of quite a lot of wealth as well. Uh, you know, it's like, it's not a small amount of money, whatever this is. Fortune can come in many forms though. So we'll pull another clarifier on that, but it could be, you know, it could be, it could be saying that actually, you know, the great fortune here with the wheel as well, this, this is good luck, good fortune, great fortune. Uh, it's fortunate that something's closing and that you're being moved on to a better situation. Um, tell me, please, about the King of Swords and the Wheel. Why is the King of Swords here, please? Why is the King of Swords here? Uh, courtship. It did, again, possibly come out in reverse. So somebody could be taking action... It's like waiting for your luck to change in love or waiting for the wheel of fortune, to, waiting for the right time to take action in regards to this love situation here. Um, and then tell me please more about, um, just tell me more about the situation. Anything else you want to tell me about this situation? A privileged lady. So there you go. That's somebody getting appreciated. There's a privileged lady who either wants to show their appreciation for somebody or who is being appreciated by somebody. Um, okay, well, whatever that is. A wealthy man there on the underline as well. So it may be that... Definitely looks like money's involved. Um, definitely looks like it could be some sort of work situation. Or maybe inheritance. Or... I don't know. Something to do with money. Like prosperity, wealth. Uh, wanting to feel comfortable. Wanting to have a secure home. Wanting to appreciate somebody, wanting to have a romance with somebody there. Um, the wheel of fate is is turning here in this situation. So tell me more about why great fortune is here, please. Um, this is here's the communication. Uh, so this could be something about Twitter as well. The birds give me like Twitter. Um, this is mass communication as well. This is. Uh, this is uh, kind of like um, a group of people communicating. It's it's uh, mass communication. So it could be that somebody's getting a job, especially with the King of Swords here, which again can sometimes indicate um, a job opportunity, somebody giving you a job opportunity in things like communications. So it could be somebody's getting a job in communications. Um, it should, could be that you hear about something very fortunate um, on social media. Um, it's like, oh my God, this I, can't, I have to go for this. Like, this is too good to be true. I need to take this leap of faith here towards this. Um, sometimes it's word of mouth as well, like almost like Chinese whispers. So do be careful there. Uh, again, there could be, um, we're picking up again with that sort of seven of swords. There could be a lot of gossip about a situation, especially something to do with the home here, with it being the birdhouse and having the hearth hearth there. Um, so tell me about courtship and the wheel of fortune. Tell me about courtship, please. Courtship, this king of swords. Oh, okay, sorry, there's a booby on this card. Um, so this is the um, almost like Queen of Wands energy. It's like the sexy woman. Uh, there's a sense of someone waiting. Again, there's something about time, fate, Wheel of Fortune, divine timing. Uh, this sense of anticipation, um, waiting for somebody. Um, yeah, it's like this, it's this kind of energy here. It's kind of Queen of Wands, Queen of Cups, somebody who's very romantic, very loving, very... Um, like sultry almost um 
this waiting for fate to change, for the situation to change. She's looking forward towards the future. It's almost like she's looking out of that window and she's got a very similar looking window there as well behind her. So I'm definitely seeing that as the same person. Somebody could be 29. Um, something could happen on the 29th. That we're obviously not February. It's not a leap year. Um, maybe that's something to do with something there. Um, you know, it's said, isn't it, that the 29th of February is the day that traditionally women are able to do the proposal. So I don't know. Maybe somebody's waiting for a leap year. That's what the leap of faith is possibly. I don't know. I don't know. Um, anything that comes through for a reading is meaningful to somebody somehow. So maybe just somebody has a birthday on the 29th of February and it's like, I don't know. What's that about like every four years, something about a four year cycle? Something about four, yeah, four. There's something about a four-year cycle. I don't know what it is, but it's something for somebody. Um, like the Olympics? <laughs> What's that? Ace of Swords. There's, there is this need to like say something, to speak some kind of truth, to, sh to say that you appreciate somebody. But then there's this feeling of like having to hold back, not being the right time, uh, getting impatient. So tell me more about this kind of like impatience, the fool, the lovers. What else is going on over here, please? Okay, so that, here's a secret, and it's the stork. Whoa, somebody could want to have a baby with somebody. Something. This could be a nest egg. The storks uh, carry, you know, bring news of, uh, again, like golden opportunities. Uh, queen of Cups, again, Queen of Hearts is the Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups, Queen of Cups. Somebody could be pregnant. Somebody could be tied, tied to a situation because of uh, pregnancy. That could be, it could be that somebody wants to communicate that they want to have a baby with somebody and they're holding back. Oh, like, look, yeah, okay. Somebody could be communicating that somebody's pregnant, which is why they're tied to something. Or somebody could be communicating that they want to have a baby. Um, or this is communication about this kind of like golden opportunity. So take that as it resonates, leave it if it doesn't. Yeah, you've got the rider card again there. That's almost like the privileged lady bringing in news. Uh, interesting. So I wanted to clarify that great fortune. So tell me more about this great fortune. What form does the great fortune take, please? Tell me more about great fortune, please. Oh, knight of wands. Yeah, passion and four of cups. Uh, four of cups. Don't miss out on this golden opportunity. Uh, don't kind of sulk. Um, and oh, yeah, four of cups. I hate this card. It's like sulky, like... I'm not going to be the one to take action. It's almost like this person needs to come and tell me how they feel. I'm just going to sit here waiting. Like this Knight of Wands, like pretending to turn the back. It's like um, the Knight of Wands is very, very passionate. It is Aries energy. So it's like your passion is, is this great fortune. Um, or your great fortune is something that you feel very, very passionate about. But then there's this sense of like, well, come and get me then. It's, it's like, where is the passion? Show me the passion. Like, like feeling like feeling disinterested, feeling like you're over a situation, feeling like maybe like maybe the, maybe it's like uh, this past situation that you had no passion for it anymore. It's like I'm bored of this situation. You know, what are they giving me? Where is my John Wayne? Where is my Prairie Sun? Sorry, I'm terrible. Like, <laughs> not got my singing voice on today. Where is my, is it happy landing? Where have all the cowboys gone? So it's almost like waiting for a hero, like being bored of a situation, wanting the passion and the great fortune is the passion. So it could be, again, like some kind of project is going to come in. And it's the thing about the four of cups is the fourth cup is like this divine offer from the universe. Um, so it's like you don't want to miss out on an opportunity there. So anything that gets you fired up, anything that gets you out of this kind of like sulky energy, um, you know, you want to take a bit of a leap of faith towards it. Um, there. Yeah, don't don't miss out on an opportunity because you're so busy sulking or, you know, being huffy. Um, anything else I want to clarify? What's the turn of fate? So what what what's what is this about right timing? What what needs to change here? So again, secretive energy, page of wands. So um, somebody is kind of watching, someone's studying. It's like somebody's waiting for the right time, keeping an eye on the situation. 
um, trying to gather information uh, about whether this is the right time to to um, move something forward or to communicate something. Again, this kind of like passion project here. Uh, what else? Um, so tell me more about what's being communicated. The tower. Oh, yeah, this something's going to come in. It's going to be like a... A bit of a shock here when this when this communication happens it's going to bring in a tower moment can't again more scorpionic energy um it may be that somebody's communicating that they've had a baby or they're having a baby with somebody else um it may be you know if you if you're pregnant it can possibly come in as a bit of a shock it's like oh my god what do i do now like i wasn't expecting this um I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but it's could have come in. There's a bit of a shock. It's going to sh shake your foundations when this news comes in. It's something to do with this stalk energy. Why is the stalk here? Oh, King of Wands. Yeah. Okay. And the Devil card. Okay. Yeah. The Devil card can talk about being chained to things. It can be um, addictions. It could be the King of Wands and the Devil could be sexual addiction. It could be that somebody has... Um, is chained to a situation because somebody's got pregnant, because somebody's gone waving that wand around, right? Um, got Capricorn energy there, um, fire sign energy. Uh, it could be obsession. This could be this the King of Wands and the Devil. This could be like obsession, um, like obsessed with their person. Um, I'm obsessed with you. I want to have a baby with you. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I'm obsessed with you. I want to build a home with you. Um, the devil card isn't always bad. It can be, it can be, uh, it can indicate very strong sexual feelings in a situation. Like I find you irresistible. Um, may come as a bit of a shock. Right. I don't know. Right. I'm going to leave it there, Aries. Best of luck with that one. Um, I hope it was helpful to you. Um, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.